Welcome to Awaken with Victoria Bond. I'm your host, Victoria, and I am absolutely honored to bring you this podcast where we will be getting raw, real, turning up consciousness, removing the old energies that do not align, and turning up our capacities as human beings and spiritual beings. I will be bringing you mediumship. I will be bringing you channels. I will be bringing you points of view that will shift your perspective and realign your body, your mind, and your soul. Enjoy this ride. This comes from my heart to yours. And know that while you're listening to this, indeed, you are helping to create this. Enjoy the ride, and I'll see you inside. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Awaken with Victoria Bond. I am Victoria Bond and I'm so excited to be here. It has been a challenge to get to recording this podcast. I have tried, I have done it, and things have always popped up in my way. The recording has been really bad quality or I've had an SOS or there's been a distraction or I've run out of time. And I'm going to be really honest with you. I nearly gave up on recording this episode today. And I was lying in bed this morning, about 5.30 this morning, and I was thinking, do I record this? Do I share what I know about the collective energy? Do I share what I know about these dark energies and also the light energies? Do I share about the channeling and do I share about what is really happening in the world now? Because apparently it's quite hard to do that. Things are going to come up and they're going to mess with my computer. I'm going to get distractions with the phone ringing with SOSs um, or other things that pop up. So maybe I'm just not meant to do it. I was lying there in bed and I thought, you know better than this. If something keeps popping up, it's exactly the thing that you require to do and where you require to show up so you can help the world and create a ripple effect throughout the entire world because one listener might get something, might get a golden nugget and share it with somebody else. And they might share it with somebody else. And they might share it with somebody else. And if only one person does this, and of course we are energy, so our our auras shift and change and our vibration does, so we're actually affecting everybody in our reality, not just the one person that we're told, then Victoria, it is worth getting up, it's worth uh, having the struggles with recording the podcast the five times that it's not happened, and I'm talking about, I actually did a 40-minute podcast talking about what I'm talking about today, and the quality was so terrible that I just wouldn't put it up. And I was like, why would I channel? And why would I be able to do it for 40 minutes if it wasn't meant to be heard? So the long and the short of it is, here I am. I'm sitting here in my unicorn onesie. It is 7 o'clock in the morning. The sun is barely up. Actually, I don't even think it is up yet, to be honest. And I'm going to share this with you because this is my purpose. My purpose is to be bold. It is to be raw. It is to be authentic. It is to be in my integrity. And uh, that is not exactly what's happening in the world today. So... I'm going to invite you to listen with your ears, your conscious ears, right? Not your programmed mind. I'm going to invite you to drop your barriers and open your heart. And I'm going to invite you to call in your guides and your angels, the earth beings, uh, calling in source energy, your higher self, and just invite yourself to be very, very earthed and grounded invite yourself to be humble and to come into love and gratitude for this time that you're taking out for uh, listening you know so taking this time out to listen to what I'm gonna share with you in this this channel so I'm thinking maybe the reason why I was not able to record and we'll see we'll see if this one goes live is because maybe the timing wasn't right or maybe today's channel is going to be more potent than the one yesterday, okay? So I have got tourbaline and I've put little bits of tourbaline, which is a crystal, all around me, in front of me, to the side and behind me. I'm holding a couple of crystals, they're blue crystals, so I can speak clearly 
and so you can hear me. And uh, the reason why I did this is not for protection. Um, it is for the vibration that I would like to share with you in the frequency. And I don't want anything messing with our frequency, okay? So it's, it's, it's a great thing to use crystals as they are their own energetic entities as well. I also have incense around me. I have candles around me and flowers. Um, obviously, you can probably hear some birds around me. I'm in a little cabin by the beach at the moment. Um, and, you know, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I really do think that fire like candles and incense and saging sticks and crystals are really beautiful tools. I also think the earth is a beautiful entity and, you know, can be used as a tool to ground ourselves. And I really do believe that grounding is the, the number one, number one priority that we should all be adopting in our lives today because energy is our first language. And it's really important to be able to hold our own energy because nobody else is going to hold you, but you must be able to hold yourself. And my dad said something to me when I was a little girl, and he said, Victoria, you've got to look after number one because no one else will. And that actually kind of brings tears to my eyes. It makes me feel a bit emotional because it made, I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not seeing this in the world like I am a little bit because people are crazy and manipulative and programmed and conditioned. And there's also so much love, of course, but I was seeing everybody martyring themselves out, you know, um, and I, it always stuck with me. In my times of great depression, anxiety, of being lost, of spiritual awakenings, of having children and breakups and all the things, being in being totally poor and not knowing how I'm going to buy my next freaking, you know, food. Um, I always just remember my dad saying, look after yourself, be number one, because no, you know, no one else is going to. And it, it rang true. From 17 years old, I was pretty much, I just moved town. I wanted to be with my boyfriend, who's my now husband. Um, I went into my hairdressing apprenticeship. I got paid barely anything. I bought me my, my first car. Um, I showed up, I went partying, I did, I did all the things that you do when you're a teenager. I went flatting and I went boarding and I I, I did so much. Even though I had my, my boyfriend, I decided that I was here to live and I was so scared. Like, oh my, I can't even explain to you from a little tiny town with lots of little brothers and sisters, well, two brothers and two sisters, um, going to church, being in, you know, going to an area school. Um, I'm, you know, my best friends are still my best friends now, feeling all emotional here. I had to move to a city, which was like an hour and a half away, but still that was a long way then. Your parents just can't just jump in the car, and, you know, especially when they've got kids and they don't have a lot of money. They can't just come over at any time. Uh, and I had to do it all alone. And it was scary. And I knew I couldn't just be codependent on my boyfriend. Um, and, 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 <laughs> and he was going through his own stuff. He was only 18. So I did it alone. And I experienced the boarding. And I experienced the parties. And I experienced the things where I, I just fucked up everything. But I had to. And I knew I had to because I knew I was here to live. Okay. So I've done a lot. A lot of people think because I've had the same partner for 22 years that minus two, we did have a breakup and I went and I experienced, you know, a whole lot of independence, but they think that I've had a sheltered life, but really I managed to live so much in there and I was so scared out of my mind. And I'm scared right now when I'm saying this to you, because what I'm going to say to you is really like scary, but it's so beautiful. And that is why I've put the tourbaline around me. And that is why I'm holding these, these crystals that are so hot right now. And I'm so, so scared and excited about the world that we're in. And I feel like I'm that 17-year-old girl. And I just, I have to say this. I have to do this. Even though I know there's another option, there's another possibility, you know, that I can just not I could stay in bed right now and have another sleep and do a meditation and go, you know what? It's in the too hard basket because the podcast just isn't recording. 
because there is darker entities that don't, they want to distract me. They want to put the SOSs in front of me. They want to F with my recording and because the world doesn't want to, a lot of the world doesn't want to hear what I have to say. And what I'm going to say to you is, you know, this collective energy that we're in right now is all energy. And we must be able to hold the energy. If we can't hold ourselves, no one else is going to hold us. And this is what spirit, actually my great-grandmother came through just before and she told me that. And I said, oh, thank you. I was like, great-grandmother's here. My granddads are both here. Thank you. All in spirit. And I said, please, please help me with this podcast because the world needs to know and I don't know who's going to hear it or who's going to stay on for long enough to hear what I have to say. And my, my great-grandmother said, Victoria, you have to hold your own energy because no one else will. And then that reminded me of what my dad said. So I, I pray to God that this, this works and I, I hope you're still listening because I'm just kind of easing you in energetically. We're going to talk about the collective channel today. This is a collective channel and we're going to be talking about the collective and we're going to talk about channeling. Okay, so there's a lot I want to say on this and... But I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm going to go with the, the channel of it. What is happening right now collectively is the veil is thinning. It's thin. It's very, very thin. We, uh, it's pretty much the difference between. <laughs> this is what I was saying in the podcast yesterday that didn't work. It's, it's like having an insulated house with double glazing um, and then being in a, like a little shack with just pretty much a wall, right? Uh, you, you can... When you're in an insulated house, like you're warm, you're contained, you don't really know what's going on on the outside. And that is kind of like what has been happening in this world for so long is that it's been really safe and easy to be in the 3D world because you don't really, um, you can just live in, in, in this container like as a 3D human being, which is a beautiful thing, by the way, which I will talk about. It's a very, very beautiful thing. But we've always had these people who are spiritually in tune and they've been able to reach the energetics of the other side, as people say. There's no really other side. It's more like dimensions. And I, I see it like walls, if I was going to explain it um, for, the, for the human mind. And the spiritual beings, the, the mediums, the energetic healers, uh, all of these um all of these people have kind of been living more in, you know, a cabin, a shack where there's no insulation, there's, there's, the glass is thin, and they've been able to just pretty much tell what's going on on the outside, like in the spiritual world, okay? So the people that have been more 3D have been in an insulated house, insulated house with um, double glazing, they've just been living their lives, happy as Larry, nothing really gets to them, they're nice and warm, the outside noises don't annoy them. And the people who are spiritual, uh, like myself, who do this kind of for a job and also live a spiritual life uh, with spirits around and the, the multidimensional beings, so they're very aware of energy, have been more like in a cabin, right? So they can tell what's going on. It's very easy for them to tune in to see what's happening on the outside. Now, what is actually happening is it's like all the insulated houses with the double glazing have all just turned into cabins with very thin walls. So everybody now has this access to what is actually happening in the spiritual world, the energetic world. And this has a lower, you know, uh, a lower expression and a higher expression. I don't want to say right or wrong, but pretty much this is amazing, but it's also shitty <laughs> because many people can't hold themselves within energy because they've been living in the 3D. They haven't been living in the 5D. Of course, they may have little 5D experiences when they go to a, an energy healer and they go, whoa, what was their energy? You know, where they, they go and they have some Reiki or they go to see a psychic medium or a coach and they go, wow, you know, or they go to church as well. You know, they go there and they go, this is so beautiful. I'm just like one with source and one with God. I feel this. But it's always been kind of short-lived. You know, they're just like, oh, yeah, I felt my granddad around and then it disappeared and it was that one story and that one life. But now it's changing. And now it's every day, all day. 
And this is why I've created my Magnificent Mediumship certification because I felt this was going to happen. About three years ago, I felt that the world was going to change so significantly. I was told this as a little girl being brought up in the church. I was told that the world was going to change. It was the end of the world as we knew it. So the world wasn't going to blow up, but it was the world was going to change and only some of us are going to survive. And that was really, I heard that once as like a six, seven-year-old. And it stayed in my head. Maybe I was, I don't know, eight, nine, I don't know. But it stayed in my head and I've known it in the back of my head my whole fucking life. So when I started becoming becoming spiritual, when I remembered who I was pretty much, and which I've been doing work on myself every single day for like six years in the spiritual awakening, you know, category. So really diving deep and doing all the unsexy work, spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars to have experts help me with my blind spots and also investing in myself so I can help others. But pretty much I knew this was going to happen. Now that is not my ego speaking because if you speak to my clients or you watch my content from a few years ago, I drop little hints and I keep saying, you know, the world is going to be changing. And I didn't want to do any fear mongering. I didn't want to scare people, but I knew it was happening. And the minute the virus hit, like I'd felt the buildup, I just went, okay, this is the beginning of what I, I, I saw and I felt and I know to be true. And I'm so fucking scared and so fucking excited. It was really excitement before fear, but my spleen is defined in human design. I'm a projector, so I can feel the pretty much the world around me. I've been in a cabin my whole entire life uh, from a spiritual sense. So I've always, although I've only been practicing what I do now for the last six years, uh, as an energetic being, I have always been in a cabin and I've always played out what is happening in the collective. And I've always felt other people's emotions like extremely. So I was a highly emotional person on a, a roller coaster. And now I'm not really because I'm aware that I'm a non-emotional person because I am have got an open solar plexus. So I amplify the world around me and the collective energy. And that is why I can channel and read the vibration of the collective and the humans around me. Hopefully you're still with me. So what is happening right now is, like I explained, the, the veil is very, very thin. It, it's like the veil between the worlds, the veil between the 3D and the 5D, the veil between humans and spirit. And many would say there's really no veil. There's really, we're just <clears throat> all multidimensional beings. And yes, I do agree with that. But we've always had this little bit of a buffer between us because we weren't ready to be more conscious we weren't ready. My grandmother and my great-grandmother and my mother, they, they weren't ready. The world wasn't ready. The collective wasn't ready. And whatever we're all experiencing at the same time is what we call the collective. So there is the energetic flows because we are all connected as humans. It's kind of like imagining a thread coming from my heart to your heart to the next person to the next person. We've all just, we're all just connected. And this is why we all react. We all create. This is why on the in the collective energy, we have the good and the bad. You know, we have these expressions of people all going crazy and then all these people waking up. We've got this polarity that's happening. And there's these just kind of energetic congruent energies where we're all people seem to be going through the same stuff and going wow what a coincidence it's never a coincidence it's all energy speaking to energy and many of us talk about abundance many of us talk about manifestation and many people go yeah the secret you know let's I want a million dollars I want a million dollars if I want it hard enough I'll get it but they're thinking that their mind can create that but it's all energy so you've got to hold the energy back yourself before you can create that amount of money because the universe does not judge. God does not judge whatever God means to you. They say God is the great punisher and, you know, God loves you so much and you will always get what you want and give it up to God. And I get that. But if consciousness is not judgmental, whether it's 
source, divine source, whether it's God, whether it's, you know, uh, your higher self, whether it's oneness, whatever your, the universe, whatever your thing is, it's this kind of same energy. What you get back is always what you're vibrationally putting out there, no matter what. If you're putting out drama, because your subconscious is like, oh man, I'm a bit bored. You know, I want to spice up my life a little bit. And you don't even know that you're thinking that because this is your subconscious brain. <laughs> the universe, God, source energy, all of the above is going to give you the drama that you're asking for because your wish is my command. Maybe God is just a genie in a bottle and you're always going to get what you want. And there's never, ever, uh, there's there's, a, there's an endless supply of wishes. There's never ever a limit on what it is you're asking for, and you will always get it. Having is the evidence of wanting, and that is like straight up. Having is the evidence of wanting. So wherever you're at right now is because you wanted this subconsciously, uh, or your subconscious wanted it, or you know you wanted it, and that's where these different expressions come in: the higher and the lower. This veil is thinner right now, coming back to that. So I was just talking about your energy for a second because it's very important to hold yourself and ground yourself down and expand yourself. If anyone wants to talk about protection, this is how you protect yourself. You ground yourself. You come to your heart. You feel gratitude and you expand yourself. And you don't judge anything, not even COVID. You don't judge it. You don't judge it. You just come from a space of what else is possible? You know, what is so right about this I'm not getting? And this is why I say it's beautiful and it's so fucking scary because we are changing. This veil is so thin that everyone has access to it. And this is why I created my program. This is why I downloaded it from Spirit at 4.44 a.m., because people have to know how to hold themselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. This is why I have this podcast. This is why I have a YouTube channel. This is why I have Psychic Medium Victoria Bond, because I desire for people to hear me and hold themselves and to expand themselves and to grow themselves. The world is ready to become a lot more conscious. Gaia, Sophia, our planet, so Earth, Gaia, she is receiving so much more information from the cosmos. We, there's so many storms. You just have to go ask any scientist. There's all of these like cosmic storms happening right now. And we're getting all this plasma, like rays coming through our sun and neutrinos are always coming through on a scientific level. The earth is receiving so much more. There's these cosmic storms. And like we receive all of that, those energetics. They come into our body. We're not these solid, just, you know, animals that we seem to be. We are fully sensitory. We've got buttons and DNA. We've got all of these things within our bodies. We are literally a whole like ecosystem. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right thing to say, but we've got organs and cells. We've got all this DNA and we've got all of these molecules. We are molecules. <sighs> and I didn't pass science or maths. I didn't pass anything at school. So I might be saying the wrong words. I, I just don't really care because I can see it all energetically. When you are willing to receive the information from the universe, you're going to notice that there is no veil. And if you cannot hold yourself and you don't have your head, you're going to lose it, okay? So there's a higher, a higher expression and lower expression of everything. And if you're using your mind too much and you're not leading with energy and intuition, then you can lose your head. The other thing as well is if you're just all energy and you're just like, yeah, I'm just energy, I'm so 5D, and you're not using your head or you're not being 3D, you can also lose your head. Um, in fact, you probably won't lose your head. You will just drift off and disappear. And this is what I saw a few years ago is people starting to disappear. And I started seeing people 
disappear, people losing their heads, practitioners and facilitators. This is the, the prediction, the, the, the feeling I had coming up, which I haven't really discussed a lot because I didn't want to feed the collective energy into that because our thoughts are what creates the collective energy. The more we have the same thought, um, if all of us are kind of doing that or we feed something, then it grows. Whatever we put our intention onto, that's what grows the collective. So I, I kind of just kind of thought, thank you for that awareness and let it go and kind of stored it somewhere else for when it was ready. And I literally was seeing practitioners and facilitators like nearly like the eyes going black. I saw pretty much these nearly souls leaving um, and then possibly other souls stepping in to take over their bodies. I saw, um, yeah, uh, the the darkness um, overtaking this light energy within the people that had egos. So, and then I see the rest of the world, like a lot of the world, actually waking up at the same time. And this is where I saw the polarity as I see half the people waking up and then I see these other people and I see less people than the people waking up. So I feel like, you know, light will always win in the end, not that it's a competition. But I see people waking up and then I see people literally just disappearing or being taken over and fighting with the people with the light, controversy, conflict, ego coming up blaming, shaming, um, like I think there's even, I'm just thinking about the Bible, there's stories, I don't know where, what story it is with the brothers fighting and stuff like that. It's like that is the energy that I'm seeing. And I was a very bad Catholic girl. I didn't ever read the Bible. <laughs> but some of these stories that we were told were definitely metaphors for and maybe predictions of what is what is going to happen, what is happening. And I have said for years to my my inner circle groups, you know, people who are uh, with me and in my in my high level containers, for those who are really interested in this type of stuff, I've said to them, stay grounded and hold your heads, hold your energy, because you're going to start noticing people around you are not going to be who you think they are or they seem to be because they're going to be changing and shifting. And this is a choice. This is a choice. And if you're waking up, you're going to notice people around you and you're going to notice where they may not be functioning for the highest good of themselves or the world. They may be functioning from ego. Now, this is a darker energy. Some people think that a dark energy and entities are literally like ghosts and demons and devil energy and bad aliens and shit like that. And yeah, 100% those things are there but we need to watch ourselves. We have to watch ourselves because it could be your friend. It could be your partner. It could be your client. It could be your parents. It could be anybody. And if they're choosing to feed uh, their ego, because we are entities within ourselves, then we, we can't allow ourselves to be dragged into their shit and lower our vibration. This is not to scare you. I'm not saying that your family members around you are going to turn and they're going to become, you know, demonic or anything. But if there is the weaknesses, if there is mental illness, if there is a part of them who wants to play out their subconscious and there's a part of them that is indulgent within their shadows, and they, the veil is so, so thin, they don't really know what is reality here on earth or what is 5D, which is more kind of like this dream state, um, emotional experience where time isn't real. Uh, it, nothing is really real. Money's not real. We get to create by magic, by manifestation, uh, by calling in the abundance and stuff like that, like I was talking about before. Yeah, we can access all of that stuff but you can do it from a lower expression or a higher expression because the universe and God does not judge. It gives you what you want. So it's not, it's within your homes. It's within yourself. It's within this town, this country, the, the world, this tiny little planet we live on. It's tiny. It's tiny. 
but we still think that we are God, that we, we, we can create everything. And yes, we can, but not from a place of ego, not from a place of not being humble. It's really important to be in your integrity of who you are in your soul and to be authentic, even if you don't know where you're fucking going, you have to come to your heart and your soul and your center and ground, because that's what the earth is for, to help us be grounded, to help us come to the energy of love for ourselves and for all around us. But if we're loving everybody else more than we're loving ourselves, that there again is not ideal, because you're giving yourself up you lose yourself. And the opposite of that is really putting yourself first and being more narcissistic and being like, oh, you know, it's all about me. I know this, you know, I'm a leader of the paradigm. I'm this and I'm that. I'm better than everybody else. If people have that feeling, then that's not ideal either. Remember who you are. And remember why you came here, and we're all meant to be connecting. We are all here to help each other, but we're here to hold ourselves and ground first. This means we have to learn as a collective to say no and learn how to say yes when it's energetically correct for us. What's energetically correct for me is not always going to be energetically correct for you. You know, I messaged my friend the other day. I said, I'm going to the beach. Would you like to come? Do you want me to pick you up? And she said, oh, I'm just having a lie down because I'm tired. Some people would have just said, oh yeah, I'm not really doing anything. Okay, I'll come even though I don't really want to because I'm tired and I want to have a lie down. But my friend was like, no, thanks. I'm just doing this. I'm like, okay, then bye. It's not energetically correct for her to come to the beach. So why are we saying yes when we really want to say no? And why do people think that they are the shit and that they're better than everybody else? Because they're not. And why do we think we're not as good as other people? It's ego. Ego is a thing that these darker energies are using to mess with you, to mess with us, to mess with this collective. There is the individual which is the self ego. And then there's this kind of collective ego as well. And I haven't even really got into spirit yet in channeling, but I think it's super important to hear this. And when people start getting like triggered with what I'm saying, because I'm coming back to the real, real basics. And I'm doing this in all my groups from the $33 group to the thousands of dollars a group, right? And also on my free platforms like this one. It's so important for you to come back to who you are and remember who you are as a soul. And this is not a cognitive thing. This is an energy. So when I jump on, like I jumped on this podcast right now and I, and I started crying thinking, oh my God, this is so intense. You know, how am I going to explain to these people what is actually happening? Because I don't like focusing on darkness you know, I want to focus on love and light, love and light, love and light, but love and light is just, again, it can be real or it can be fake. And there's a lot of fucking fakeness out there. And energy will tell you your energetic self, if you can listen with all of your energy, not just with what you see in front of you and what someone's telling you, if you start using energy as your first language, you're going to start seeing where the manipulation is. You're going to start seeing where the lies are. You're going to start, I see auras and I can tell straight away who's in front of me and exactly what's going on for them and exactly what they can do to transform their reality or to wake up or to whatever. But I don't tell them because it's not my place. There's no invitation to tell them. And I don't want people telling me <laughs> what my what my insecurities are or what my weaknesses are, unless I ask them. And the reason why that is, is because we will shift and change, realign, reassess, adjust, pivot whenever we are ready. Not when somebody else is ready for us to change. Again, ego. You know, if you're a coach, if you're a practitioner, if you're a mum, if you're a lover, you're, you know, you're something because you are a being who requires others to survive. We must remember that as well. We need each other to survive. People seem to forget that. They, they, they go, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. They forget that we all need each other to survive. That's how we work as a community. It's kind of hilarious what the human race is doing. But it, it comes back down to that ego and listening 
to your energy. Waiting for those invitations. Can somebody else hear what you're saying? Are they ready to hear it? And I see a whole lot of what we call light workers going, oh my God, Victoria, I woke up and now I want to share this with everybody. And I'm like, that's great. I know how that feels because I did the same thing. But what can people hear? And what are people ready to hear? We, we don't have to be secretly doing this now. We don't have to be secretly, you know, doing our smudging and our card readings and having our crystals. It's just become our norm because the world is ready for it. And people will come to you and they will hear you or you will go, hey, do you mind if I tell you this, this random thing I heard on this podcast? And they're going to go, yeah, go ahead and tell me about it on your coffee walk when you're being human. And they're going to go, holy shit, that's weird and interesting. And it's going to wake up a part of their DNA. And they're going to change. They're going to wake up. My sisters and my siblings and everybody, my friends, they're all waking up around me. My husband, completely, I don't know if it's completely awake, but he's like really, really woken up. Me, yeah, I feel like I'm still in a dream state and I'm like still can't actually really, you know, acknowledge if is this a hologram? Am I living this? And then I was like, you know what? It doesn't fucking matter. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm here to make a big difference. And the more people that wake up, the better for those that are ready. So this podcast has the ability to reach thousands and thousands and thousands of people that I may never, ever see or hear from, which I would love to hear from you, by the way, if any of this resonates. <laughs> um, I'd love to know what you think. But I may never, ever hear from anybody. And I just have to trust in myself that what I'm doing is coming from my heart, coming from grounding and coming from a space of contribution for the entire world. And that is going to reach somebody and they're not going to turn it off because they're not ready to hear it. You know, some people might turn it off because they're not ready to hear it, but I just hope that there's some people out there that listen to this whole thing and they go, okay, yeah, shit is actually happening now. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, three years ago, I knew it was coming, but now it's here. And we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. The, the, the massive mass wake up is happening right now. And nothing ever thinks as we, nothing ever happens as we think it is. And the truth is a lot of people think it's coming. Like a lot of people are waiting for Jesus to come back. A lot of, you know, we're always waiting for Jesus to come back. And we're, people are waiting for Jesus to be born, like the Jews or however that works. Uh, some people think it's just oneness. There's, there's so many belief systems and there's truth in every single one of them. And I believe it's happening right now. And I believe that there is so many planets right now and we're all communicating together. And I believe that I'm on other planets simultaneously because we're multidimensional. We are galactic beings and we're having a human experience, but it doesn't mean you're just here just now. You're in other places as well. And we must do whatever we can for our community to be in service. And this is what I'm doing today. This is my service for the world. And I, I trust that if no human listens to it, then the vibration will make a ripple effect. I'm going to talk a bit now, and I want, to, I, want, I want to hear from you if this resonates with you, please, because I have to reach the world in some way. Trust and faith is great, but evidence is fabulous because then I can know how hard and deep I can go into this stuff. So I'm just touching the surface. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've experienced in the last couple of weeks. Now, I knew there was going to be practitioners, facilitators, mediums that were going to be losing their heads and, and disappearing and people coming in to their bodies. I've seen this with one very, very famous card creator, Oracle card creator. Um, she was definitely a, a massive part of the spiritual community worldwide and you probably know what I who I'm talking about I don't want to say any names I don't want to pull any attention energetically to what I'm saying but this person has got so many decks of cards it's ridiculous and I have got so many of them and I love them to this day and I still buy them because of the energy she was when she created them and all my card readings with them 
she announced a couple a few years ago that not to buy her cards anymore that everything she did was completely utterly totally evil and now like it was from an evil source and to turn to god and be religious to be christian now she always proclaimed she was christian i believe but she was all like the spiritual medium and she was she's worldwide famous and she did these youtube videos begging people not to buy her stuff anymore because it was evil because it wasn't of god and she had woken up like kind of like a born again christian i suppose like she she woke up i don't know if it's like born again christian but i just think born again <laughs> into religion when i first heard this and everyone's going oh my gosh look what's happening she's like well, turned what the hell like she's turned her back on the spiritual people like and she's begging them to go to the bible and although I have nothing against the Bible or religious people at all, you know, um, I was like, that's not her anymore. She's fucking gone. She has ascended or she's transcended. Or I don't even know. Like, I think she's ascended. Like, she's gone. She's gone. And it's just her body. And someone has stepped into her body and is saying this. And that, that person who stepped in is obviously uber religious. What the fuck? And everyone's going, she's lost her mind, she's changed, she's shifted, oh my gosh. And some people might be like, yay, she woke up and now she's like super religious. It depends on what your standpoint is on that. And I went, she's not fucking there anymore. I don't even recognize her. She looks completely different. She's speaking differently. Holy shit. I believe that there's a walk-in. I believe that she's left or she's stepped back. But because she was so conscious, I believe she's left. Because with walk-ins, what actually happens is, remember, we're energetic beings. We're not actually solid like we seem. <laughs> um, is when you ask for help, you know, or you're like, oh, I've had enough of this, then another spirit can come in and kind of function for you, I suppose. And you can step back. Like I did this with when my, see, my son was born. I was like, this is too much. I don't want to do this. Help. And I don't remember much of it because I believe that entities, some of them were pretty good. I'd say mother archetype entities that were kind of hanging around, jumped on in and they did the parenting kind of for me. I don't remember until I cleared all those entities out and went, oh, here I am. Here's Victoria Bond. Where have you been for however many years? We have these walk-ins. This is what I teach about in Magnificent Mediumship. But with this particular person, it wasn't a walk-in. It was a walk-in into her body, but she didn't take a back, back step, back seat. She's gone. She's gone. I should actually try to talk to her. That would be kind of interesting. I could channel her actual soul. Anyhow, so that's an example of a famous person who I don't personally know. I just have all of her, you know, decks of cards. She did very, very well in this virtual world to try and wake up the world. And then, of course, this chaos happens and she's just gone. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was like, yeah, this is too much. I'm out of here. You know, I can do, she actually, she probably thought I can do better uh, with, with no body um, and as a spirit. So I dare say she's working for us very hard. That's my interesting perception of what, what happened there. But what I actually have been seeing personally around me is people getting possessed, literally. There's different levels of that. Um, and I've also seen people being taken over by their ego and anger and hatred and thinking that they're doing things for the highest white light. But in fact, it's darkness driving them. And there's a couple of ways we can tell. I've been talking about this with all my groups. There's a couple of ways you can tell tell if this is happening. Now, I just want to touch base on this position thing. I'm just going to write this down because I've got an open head in HD. And what happens is I get a lot of information. Believe it or not, I'm actually reading your vibration that you're listening to right now because time is not linear when I'm in these spaces. I'm in a different type of paradigm. So what's happening is I'm reading your vibration and giving you what you need. Although currently as I'm recording this, you have no idea you're going to be listening to this podcast. That will fuck with you. <laughs> okay. So the position. Now, I was brought up religious and not uber religious, like dad wasn't, mum was. So I had choice if I wanted to go to church or not. And mum definitely asked us, please come to church. Please come to church. She wanted me to have a, us to have a life like she did. She loved church. It was a big part of her family, a beautiful farming Catholic family. And it wasn't like 
some people go Catholic. Ah, oh, it wasn't strict. It was just beautiful. You you prayed and you went onto your knees and you listened to the priest or you know, st- stared at the priest and as he went on to some kind of freaking, you know, story that you couldn't even understand because it was from the Bible. And uh, it was beautiful. You had the host and you had, it was, it was a ritual. It was a ritual and it was beautiful. Um, and we learned a lot about people being possessed, exorcisms. Um, of course, you become a teenager and you watch the exorcism and it scares the shit out of you. And then you're like, oh, then you watch the craft. Oh, do I do the Ouija board? Oh, God, no. My friends are doing Ouija boards and it's actually moving. Ah. Um, but we, I knew very from a very young age about people being possessed. I haven't seen it to the extremity, whatever that word is, <laughs> as I have recently. So I have seen people being possessed by demons. I have seen people functioning. I, I, most people have some level of being possessed. That's what I'm going to say. Because I reckon about 99% of the world, maybe that's an exaggeration, maybe 90% of the world, have entities that function through their bodies. So they uh, may be holding on to a loved one that's passed and that expression comes out through the body sometimes or they have walk-ins, like I was talking about, like this, that famous person who's not her anymore. She stepped out of her body, someone else stepped in. Uh, we can take a step back in and other entities can be helping us out. Sometimes people can have 30 different beings within their bodies, and we see this with schizophrenia. So, this, you know, they, they can help. Sometimes these entities can help. They definitely help me actually parent my, my little boy and my daughter when I wasn't very well until I got well and I said, oh, my God, there's entities with me and I've got a lot of mind chatter. I've got a lot going on. Please leave immediately so I can come back to me and thank you for being here. We have spirits teaching us things all the time, but sometimes they are kind of random and they come into our body and it can be it can be a higher expression or a lower expression. It can be like, oh, wow, that was great. Now you can leave. Or it can be like someone like not good. And I've seen this as well. I've seen my husband lose his shit because there was a demon in there. I was like, what the fuck? And that was scared me actually because he is the most beautiful, placid, beautiful. I've been with him for 22 years. I love him love so much. Um, and I've seen people before me just kind of blank out when I'm trying to talk to them, but they're not there. And that's that whole schizophrenia thing. You're talking to someone, but you're like, why am, where are you? Why, why am I talking to you? I'm just like, I'm talking to a different part of you. So psychologists would call us parts. You know, we do have different parts of us, but I do believe we have different parts, but there's also different entities in there. Long story short, everyone, most people have been possessed or are possessed now at a certain level. But now that the veil is thin, what is happening is people are accessing accessing this 5D and 4D energy easier. It's affecting their sleep. It's affecting their mind because they're getting mind chatter. It's affecting their relationships. They're getting confused. They're getting like literally these mind knots. They're creating drama. They're playing out these this unconscious you know, desires from the subconscious. They're, they're doing it all and they're, they're using entities to do it. Because if you cannot hold yourself, you, you're, you're opening yourself up for entities to play with. And if your ego is not in check and you want to be powerful, I'll do anything to be powerful, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get entities that will say, I'll help you be powerful, but it's going to come at a price. You don't play with demons. They will fuck you up. And what I saw recently was someone I know get fully possessed. She couldn't hold the energy of herself she couldn't hold the veil. She she was in the, the fucking veil the entire time. She was on the outside of the cabin. And when you don't have protection, you're going to get cold at night. It might snow. You know, you, you get weaker. You get sick. 
the, the human body starts, starts to disintegrate physically and mentally because you're not grounded. And to be grounded means you have to look after yourself. So you go into the cabin at least, warm yourself up, eat, drink, sleep, do all of those things, right? I'm just using that analogy of those houses. But when people are trying to be 5D all the time and they're trying to channel and they're trying to talk to spirit and they're trying to be in the spiritual world because they know that it's open because the veil is so thin, but they can't hold themselves and the ego, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want more, 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 more. They lose it. They disappear. They get fucked up. And no matter what we say to them, from a religious point of view or from a spiritual point of view or just from a friend point of view of, hey, man, like, just be here with us. Connect with us. We're all humans. We're all in this human collaboration right now. Come back. Come back. Come back to us. Be here. Be with your children. Eat some food. Let's be human together. The more you say that to somebody who wants to be in the 5D, and maybe doesn't even want to be here physically, the more they they will go the opposite way. If they can't hear you, they start losing it. We start losing them. And I don't say this to scare you, but I have literally seen this. And I I spoke to someone the, the, the other week and this person was possessed. And I said to this person, what are you doing? Come back, come back to us. And a lot of what was happening was it wasn't real because her mind was breaking and so was her body. So totally entities were there, totally. And I said to her, why are you playing with demons? And she said to me, I am playing with demons. I am a demon. And that's when I went, fuck, right? No judgment, but I went, fuck, this cannot happen. And if this is happening to you, this kind-hearted, beautiful, incredible mother and lover and uh, friend and all these things, then who's got a pure heart, but the ego comes in. She said, I'm in my ego and there's demons everywhere. Like she knew what was happening and she said, but I can't get out of it. I'm stuck. And this is because she didn't hold herself. Protection is about grounding. And it's about power and it's about choice. That's what it's about. And hopefully you're still with me because I know I go into great amounts of depth. This person, it it was sad. I had tears in my eyes and, you know, I I went out of my way to, to speak to her for an hour and it wasn't like a paid session or anything. It was because I'm a human being helping another human being. And I said to her, you need to be human right now. You can't channel. You can't tap into this other side. The veil is so thin and you got on the other side of the cabin and you locked yourself out. You can't get back inside. She doesn't want to get back into, of course, the insulated house with the double glazing. She's been there and it was 3D and it felt really uncomfortable. She wanted to remember who she was as a spirit and as an energetic being. And she did that, but she went too far, so far that there was no harmony and no balance. And everything I teach about is harmony and balance and grounding because yes, the whole entire fucking world and collective energy is scary. When you open your eyes up to awareness and you see what's happening and you see what your purpose is and your mission is here on earth, it's big. My mission is big. And what I'm here for is big. And I don't know if Facebook or my podcast or Instagram or YouTube is going to shut me down. Because we've all been keeping our mouths shut about what is actually fucking happening. But some of these spiritual practitioners are losing their minds. And they know they're no better than you. They're no better than me, right? We're not better than them. But we've got to got to ground. To be in a position, being possessed like this, this girl, like she was, she she found it very hard to come back. And I really hope she does come back. And I really hope that she comes back to be in the 3D. And what we've got to understand is it's super important to be 3D. 3D is beautiful. And I'm so sick of hearing (laughs) 
practitioners and you know coaches and or anyone spiritual you know who's tapping in anyone who's tapping into energy going I want to go home I don't want to be here anymore I'm sick of planet earth it's like where is your gratitude for this earth but I don't blame you because I used to feel the same way I was like I'm never coming back to this earth it's too hard and I had these two beautiful little babies and a beautiful husband and a beautiful home. And I was creating beautiful connections. And I was like, I want to go home to the planet. Trust me, love. You're going to get back to that planet and go, oh, shit. I wish I made more of an effort on planet Earth because that mission failed. No, just kidding. It's never a failure. But you're on a mission. And that's why I got up this morning. And although I wanted to stay in bed because I was like, there's resistance and doing this podcast and speaking the truth about being possessed, about being a channel, about the veil. And I haven't even touched base on what's happening. I'm just trying to talk to people on a human level here without using huge words, without using all the science and just coming from my perspective perspective right I'm not fucking perfect I swear a lot but and I'm unapologetic and maybe this will go on deaf ears but when I saw someone being actually fully totally possessed it made me think this is one person what can we do to help the world not all lose their heads and disappear it was really scary and my heart wept and so did my eyes because when people are leaving their children behind, when people are wanting to kill themselves because they can't hold the energy because it's so fucking intense, like it's sad and I get it, it's a lot to hold. I've been learning how to hold it for six years and I couldn't hold it six years ago. I was in bed, I was depressed, and I was overwhelmed that all the spirit was everywhere, and I didn't know how to be both. The 4D energy is about the about the shadows. We've got the three, the four, and the five. So like I say, the three is pretty much being in that insulated, beautiful house and not being aware of what's happening on the outside. But there is a beauty about that because you get to be present, and it's so important. And then there's like a time and a place for everything and it's all energetically what's correct for you. The 4D is very much the shadows and the shadows will come up when you're trying to uh, ascend to the 5D. It's what's going to happen. So for me, I'm always working on my shadows, my shadows of scarcity, my shadows of abandonment, of rejection, my shadows of getting my head cut off every fucking time I've come and done being a human. (laughs) <laughs> getting stabbed in the back that seems to be one that happens quite often it's, it's more of an energy thing not a not a physical thing like my heart hurts but energetically it all hurts but like no one's actually trying to hurt me physically right I don't fight with people in real life here on planet earth or anything but energy says things differently and this is why coming back and looping it back around to Energy will show you what the truth is. Someone might be smiling to your face and go, I love you so much, let's catch up. And really they're like, oh my God, I really don't ever want to catch up. What are you going to hear? Are you going to hear the truth or hear what they're telling you at face value? Face value lies. And that's not a bad thing. It's just like, wake the fuck up and be in your awareness and see what the truth is. Your friends aren't always your friends. They change, they shift, they they move away, they come back. Like, we just need to wake up. So it's really, really interesting. And we're here, you know, to experience this, this 4D energy. We're here to allow it to come up but doing it in an emotional master like an emotional intelligence of your age um and I know one of my old coaches used to always talk about hey what is your emotional capacity like what is your emotional intelligence for you the age that you're at so we all walking around like three-year-olds having tantrums half the time and playing out these shadows like I want attention having like a freaking tanty having a big fight with our partners or whatever because we want to play out the subconscious and experience everything as a human being but the problem is we're doing it in a stupid way we're doing it in a really immature way like a three-year-old or a six-year-old or a 10-year-old 
rather than like a 30 or 40 or 50 year old. The truth is, this is why everyone's going to journaling. This is why everyone's doing ritual. This is why everyone's grounding. This is why everyone's doing yoga because they are doing the actual work. The actual work is you holding yourself. The girl who was possessed wasn't doing the work. She didn't do it. She didn't do it enough. She was in this 5D for too long, but the the illusion there was it was more like she was in the 4D. She came out of the 3D. She kind of flew off to the 4D, and this is where she was trying to access the 5, but she got stuck in the 4D. And the 4D is important to go through because it's growth. But if your shadows are so dark and deep and you've got so much trauma and you haven't learned how to hold yourself to be emotionally intelligent at your age and to actually receive help from other people because we are a community, then the thing that happens is you, you, you just disappear. The 5D is all about love expansion, expansion manifesting really fast. No time and space, just love and expansion. No judgment. People who think they're being in the 5D, but they're judging, they're coming from their ego, uh, they're, they're talking to darker entities, they're getting attacked, all these different things, they're blaming themselves, they're going into victim mode, they're not in the 5D, they're in the 4D. And we do have harmony. We, we do jump, right? We don't always have harmony, but we do jump from three to four to five and beyond. And what I do is I help people open up to all dimensions right up to the 13th dimension. And I do channel with light language from the highest, highest white light. And to be in that space, I must be so expansive that I am just energy and love. And my human is loved and grounded. So the other thing I wanted to share with you, I know this is a very long podcast, but clearly this is the day that it was meant to happen, is the ego and the higher expression, the lower expression, um, like I think I've already mentioned, but the lower expression is I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. And the girl who got possessed was more like that. She's like, I wasn't, I'm not good enough. I want to be better in every area because she's so beautiful. She's so fucking incredible as a person, but she wanted to be better and she wasn't seeing how incredible she was at, at the same time. So we must have this self-preservation and we must have discernment of what we are doing always. This is not to be in fear. We do not need to protect. Protection is simply holding yourself and expanding and being in awareness and knowing, discerning what is energetically correct for you. Okay. So please listen to what I say when I say that. It's very important. So the ego, the, the 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 kind of different expressions is that I'm not good enough, and most of us have experienced that. Or on the other side, we've got more the narcissism. So that I'm not good enough is kind of more the codependent. If you're looking at the narcissistic and the codependent scale, uh, and what I've experienced recently is somebody the extreme opposite to that, and that is more narcissistic, which is I am so fucking good, I am so amazing. Um, it's all about me. I take no responsibility for anything. And, you know, I'm so absolutely amazing that the world should bow down to me. That is the opposite of the, I'm not good enough, but neither of them, neither of them are good or bad or right or wrong, but we do require to have balance within that and check ourselves. I always say check yourself before you wreck yourself because I'm seeing a few people around me wreck themselves and of course in the world, uh, everywhere. People are checking themselves and wrecking themselves or showing up or doing the work. It's It depends on you, you and what you want to do. Again, there's no right or wrong or good or bad because this is for your soul's evolution. So yeah, um, I did experience somebody literally who was in one of my containers who was I absolutely loved and adored I still love and adore because I see everybody's magnificence and what I experienced was a person wanting to be the coach um, thinking that they knew better taking what I was teaching 
from years and years and years because I do really share everything in magnificent mediumship. I share everything, but it's very important to do the foundations of being grounded and being within yourself. That's what this 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 call is really about. This podcast, and I saw this person, and she went literally deliberately. She went and she created her own group from my group, which you know what, like good for you, like go hard, like more the merrier. But the thing that happened next was not an integrity and was of ego and not of light, as you might say, because she was using her channeling abilities. And what I teach is when you channel, it has to come from the space of open heart, groundedness, Um, very, very, I've done a lot of work to be able to do what I do because it is about humbleness and all the things and being in the space and being physically properly um, held, right? So I do a lot of groundwork before I channel. She did a trans channel and in that channel, she was talking about having to have huge amounts of protection from all of these bad, dark, light energies coming through. And how it's affecting us and there's these things clinging on to us and feeding us and all of this stuff. And it was it was quite like gnarly and, and dark. And I'm not against anything dark. I'm, I'm here to help people coach through that. But then she started threading my name through it, my initials through it, and saying that within my containers was darkness and how there was money um, you know, bad money stuff, like I'm all in it for the money and all this stuff. And she was threading this through and speaking it to my clients. And it was in third person. So pretty much it was was this channel from, not from her, from somebody else of light, apparently. Now, when I read this, because someone actually said to me, hey, look, I'm so uncomfortable that it's not an integrity, it's not authentic, and um, Victoria, I, I don't want to see someone try to bring you down, like even though it wouldn't bring me down, but she said, I, I love you, I adore you, I'm loyal to you, and this is what's happening. Um, just one person out of the group said that. And I read it and... First of all, I was like, oh, phew, because I'd felt that my heart, there had been like a, a something in the back of my heart. And I'd been to so many practitioners, I kept having this really sore like back. And I was like, it's like there was a knife in my back. And everyone kept saying, you, there's a betrayal, there's a betrayal. I was like, oh, whatever, there's no betrayal. Like, I love everyone, love and light, you know. But I, I kind of knew. I knew, but I just ignored it. I ignored it. I took it at face value and I just tried to hold myself and flow love to this person. But I kind of knew there was some manipulation going on and I just had to wait for it to play out. And sometimes we just have to do that. And the the knife came out as soon as I read it and I went, thank you. And what had actually happened is the manipulation of trying to bring all my people, like quite a lot of my people over to her. And she'd invited quite a few people and they had said no. They didn't want to be in there. They just, I taught them how to use energy. So they just like, oh, it just energetically isn't correct for me. No, thank you, type of thing. A couple of people, or at least one, no, one or two left from, from the group. But the point being, what was said in there was so dark about me that I could never ever comprehend functioning from an energy of that. And what made me think was the ego had taken over. And although this person is beautiful and I adore and love them for who they are on a soul level, they got stuck in the 4D thinking that they were channeling from the 5D because any channels that come through are never, ever negative. There might be a little bit of, hey, guys, just, you know, like I've been saying, you know, stay strong, stay connected, stay in the energy of love because there is dark energies around there and you want to shine your light on them and stuff like that. That's okay in a channel, but when someone's deliberately bringing names through and saying that you must protect yourself and there's darkness in these containers, especially when I personally teach the complete opposite, do not protect yourself, just hold yourself and know when you're knowing and energetically, if something's not correct for you, leave. So immediately I, I, I did say to this person, hey, I know what you've been saying and um, 
what what would you like to say about that? And I pretty much didn't get any type of anything, just a, I love you so much and thank you, thank you, thank you, like bypassing it all. Again, a manipulation tactic. So I said, well, yeah, unfortunately, this is not an energetic alignment, so you're out of everything. And I took her out of everything uh, or took the entities out of everything and it created a whole lot of chaos um, in that person's world but also in my world because a lot of my people had been to her because she had been pulling them in and her energy because of this ego and living in the 4D, not of the 5D. There might be glimpses of the 5D, but it was more of this this, this 4D and not being able to hold herself in the 3D. Unfortunately, what happened is a whole lot of people got who had their own insecurities in the 4D got affected by this. And we had people who were suicidal. We had people that um, just felt extremely low and depressed. We had people that um, felt huge amounts of guilt. Um, There was five people that were affected just because it was one person thought that they were stronger and better than everybody else. And they knew how to be the coach and be better than the coach. So you take down the coach. Very, very interesting looking at it from a coaching perspective. And I never had any, um, never really any resentment, not even any bitterness because I could see what was happening. And I, I felt sadness, of course, because I thought, wow, <laughs> the, the, you know, I had to go clean up everybody. And I was like, okay, guys, okay, let me let me help you come back to yourself and your own knowing because we must never give ourselves away to anyone, even if they are pretty and light. And even if they are, you know, um, I've got a heart and I love you so much and we're meant to play together. Come on, let's go. Don't always like believe face value. Like, why? Why would we do that? You know, I've had people say to me, and this particular person once did say, yay, we're soul sisters, we're going to collaborate. And I and I thought, that's interesting because I don't feel that energy absolutely at all, but you are definitely welcome to come and do, you know, uh, transform within the teachings of my programs. So we must know what we're available for. We must know our own standards and our own boundaries. And this is what I teach in EMM is standards and boundaries. Ego can take you over. And then of course you start channeling things that have an ego that matches. And it, I, I do, I do pray and hope and trust that, the person who tried to uh, sabotage my business and that was just the beginning of it. So I'm very grateful I got it at the beginning and was able to help others that were affected by the energy who went and had sessions with her um, to, I really do hope that she comes back down to the 3D, cleans up and learns how to have harmony within the three, the four and the five. And I really do hope that people who experience being possessed as well um, understand that, This world, there's a lot. There's a lot going on collectively, individually. We are many different parts of many different ages and we do have a big grand mission and we are simultaneously living on different planets at the same time as a soul. You know, not as Victoria Bond living on all these different planets, but my soul is definitely not just here. We are always working and we are always having communication with other beings, whether we realize it or not. It's just the choice of what beings you're interacting with. And that's always about a vibration. That's always about the vibration and the frequency that you're holding and your integrity for life and how you are showing up authentically. Even if you don't know who the fuck you are on any given day, you can come back and know that you are coming from your heart and that's all that matters. So that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. This has been a long podcast. (laughs) I hope that you receive whatever you needed to receive. Some of you may have passed out and gone to sleep. If you get sleepy, it's not because of anything other than your your brain is going, whoa, you know, there might be some unconscious beliefs, thought patterns going on that are waking up. So sometimes, you know, it's good to listen. I listen to Michaela Sheldon. She's epic. I listen to her and I literally go to sleep while I'm listening to her. Um, I know a lot of people, a lot of my clients when I'm speaking uh, and channeling and doing meditations, they go to sleep. And I always say, good for you, because get out of your own way so you can receive it. Awaken is my podcast, and I'm going to try and be here as content, like 
as much as I possibly can. At the moment, I am following my energy. We are going to be shifting towns and also my business is shifting, going with the times of what's happening in the collective energy. So I am going to be on YouTube a lot. So please look up Victoria Bond on YouTube because there's going to be a lot of channels and light language and meditations as well as I'm having a pull from my guides have been kind of showing me in this direction for a while of really showing up to a lot of people and doing a lot of free content to try and reach people. Um, If you have enjoyed this, please share because, you know, (laughs) um, as I'm just thinking it's funny. It's like, I'm not all about the money. Like, you know, it's it's just kind of funny. Um, I don't need to tell you that, but please share because, I'm just laughing because of what the person said. So it's, it's 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 literally about making an impact in the world. And we've got to remember that money is a byproduct. So if you do want to do magnificent mediumship certification, uh, if you do want to do one-to-one coaching with me, I've got like three spots open for that. And I try to keep it reasonable. Uh, but of course, it's really important to have an energetic match for what we are doing in the world as well. Uh, and yeah, come and check me out on Victoria Bond Psychic Medium on my Facebook page, what Facebook group that I'm growing currently. I just closed down one of my Facebook groups that had a thousand people in it. And this year is going to be huge and it's going to be more real, more raw. And I'm going to be really turning up everything. Okay. So sending you so much love, check out the show notes. And I would love to hear from you. Love to hear what resonates. So Feel free to uh, DM me, find me on socials uh, or email me, Victoria Bond Halo Healing dot, um, oh, at gmail.com. And you can also check out my website, victoriabond.co.nz. It's all in the show notes. I'm going to go and have a rest after that channel. I am so grateful that this worked today. This is pretty much a collective channel on what's happening. And uh, just showcasing a little bit about what's been going on in my life um, because if this is happening for me, in some cases it will be happening for you as well. And all you must do is hold yourself, ground, come into your heart. You already have everything within you and no one is better or greater than you. So please never think that. I just invite you to see the greatness and the beauty and the love within yourself because that's all you need right now. And you are here like just as big a purpose as I am. And together we can create a huge ripple effect of change. So much love listening to today's episode. I trust that you got those golden nuggets that you required to shift your consciousness, to expand your awareness, and to turn up your capacity. I invite you to share this podcast with anyone that you feel would benefit from it, and also share the golden nuggets that you have learned with your friends, family, and of course, clients. You can contact me if there's anything that you want to specifically share with me and or if there's anything you want me to specifically share on the podcast. You can check out the show notes and find me on my socials and myself or my team will get back to you. My heart to yours. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon.